few minutes, I just uh, briefly go through uh, evaluation with some cases. And it is complementary to Dr. Puneet's uh, presentation, so so wonderful. So the, for any mission, as everyone mentioned, QZ is important, least significant change is important, CV is important. We need not look at the values and make a diagnosis. So it's, a, it's based on the studies done from north, uh, south and north. Osteoporosis is a common disease, and 20% uh, of them uh, sustain fractures. And so 20% of them have fractures, menopausal women. Many of them are asymptomatic. The important factor, five women who sustain a fracture, one will die in one year, whatever we do. One will do. Uh, one will die within uh, uh, one year. Whatever treatment, twenty percent mortality. And we also know that uh, dietary calcium intake is not optimal. Vitamin D deficiency is also common. So fifty percent or forty to fifty percent of Indian postmenopausal women have osteoporosis, based on various studies across India. This is from our center. 18 to 20 percent of men above 60 years have osteoporosis. So men also not spared. Aging. Some of the facts I would like to say, as Dr. Puneet mentioned, so we published even regularly menstruating women, 40 to 50 years, we do see fractures, asymptomatic vertebral fractures. Diabetes, they are at increased risk. This is a recent study we published in uh, JBMR. Sleep. If women have a less sleep, both quality and quantity, that they are at increased risk of osteoporosis. This is another study which we have published uh, in 2024. People who have more salt intake, women take more salt, they are at increased risk of osteoporosis. Now, for screening, there are so many scores for predicting osteoporosis, like OSTA, SCORE, and ORI. There are all some clinical variables we look at it. We are validated in large number of Indian population. One such core is OSTA, Osteoporosis Self-Assessment Tool in Asian. Uh, this is uh, like, you know, we can do it in primary care or secondary care setting. We need only two variables. One is weight and age. So, how very simple, weight minus age into 0.2. For example, Somebody's weight is 40 kilogram, age is 60. It is uh, 40 minus 60 is minus 20 into 0 0.2 is minus 4. So they are at high risk for osteoporosis. This score, this value has got 80% sensitivity and 40% specificity. This we validated in about 6,000 uh, 6, patients. Now, if you look at assessment, very important is whether they have a risk factors for fall, comorbidity, especially diabetes, and in clinical, very important is height measurement. If the height is coming down, we know that the patient is fracturing at the spine. Screening in Indian setting, all women, postmenopausal women at 60 years, if risk factors are there like diabetes, even early at 55 years, all Indian women, that is a current recommendation from Indian Society of Bone Mineral Research. Now, as uh, Dr. Puneet mentioned, fracture is, the, is there more than a decade. We also looked at it, how it is faring in Indian population, looking at uh, various risk factors. We need not incorporate bone density here. We just, various risk factors are there and look at our cutoff we take for a major osteoporotic fracture, more than 10% and hip fracture, more than 2% in our Indian setting. This year, or later part of last year, we looked at our study, FRAX Plus is also available. That is a paid tool. Per patient, we have to pay one euro. What is the advantage? We can incorporate number of falls, recency of fracture, duration of diabetes, all these corrections can be made. This is very useful in Indian setting. 
secondary osteoporosis dr punit mentioned all this secondary osteoporosis should be thought about especially when we see a young patient or when we find uh, somebody uh, aged with very severe osteoporosis now mandatory investigations are minimum that is calcium and albumin always when you interpret calcium it has to be corrected for albumin fasting phosphate is very important phosphate has to be measured on a fasting state because otherwise you get a wrong reading renal parameter bone will be told by alkaline phosphatase 25 hydroxy vitamin d is costly so in many indian settings it may not be uh, like you know possible bone turnover markers bone resorption marker and formation marker pth not in all patients at least before starting anabolic agent teriparatide we want to see whether patient has got a secondary osteo uh, secondary hyperparathyroidism now radiology as mentioned is very important all people we do all women above 60 we do x ray lateral spine to see fractures because dexa as sir mentioned it may not pick up all osteoporosis so dexa scan is there and x ray lateral spine to look at the fractures see there are if you look at the dexa this is the what we uh, do it in velo we we look at what all women we do vertebral fracture assessment we look at the bmd and we do trabecular bone score we also look at a hip structural analysis we also look at a bone strain index and also we do body composition to look for whether sarcopenia is there so it is it's a joint muscle bone fat everything is combined so this is the uh, overall uh, like you no know, we do and also somebody on bisphosphonate we also can do in the dexa atypical fracture we can look at it with a single energy in the dexa scan and dr punit mentioned it's a it's a caucasian database we are using as a reference so we looked at whether the icmr has got a database in 2010 but it is not faring well currently so we need a pan indian reference database for uh, uh, indian osteo uh, um, uh, for diagnosing osteoporosis here the diagnosis was underdiagnosed this is over 3000 subjects with the 300 if fracture they an icmr database underperformed even in the fractured subjects so we all know that uh, this is what uh, like you no know, x ray lateral spine will give us the uh, quantity quality of fracture type of fracture for all women above 60 we do recommend in addition to dexa or without dexa now i just go to some cases 41 year old man ortho, uh, from orthopedics with a spine fracture there is no reason for him to have a fracture it's a trivial and uh, so trivial fall there is nothing so the registrar uh, my dm resident went into detail and he gave an history of loss of libido and erectile dysfunction for one year so if you look at it uh, most of it is okay except for the visual fields he has got a visual uh, field loss as well as there is a regression of the secondary sexual characters look at the prolactin very high prolactin and testosterone is low so there is a hypogonadism secondary to high prolactin so when you look at the uh, pituitary and when we do a dexa there was a low bone mass it was a z score was less than minus two and there was a pituitary tumor and it was a macro prolactinoma which is causing hypogonadism and fragility fracture so once you treat then it is easy now this is a 21 year old lady lactating mother she had sustained a femoral shaft fracture during pregnancy she had an implant placed and she had come after delivery the calcium was not measured when she came she had a high calcium and elevated pth the diagnosis was primary hyperparathyroidism look at the bone and the implant has come up and there is no callus formation at fractured site in the chest also there is a you can see the sternum is bulging out this bone has become so thin so it is like you know it is like a brown tumor now this patient had a very low z score minus 9.4 minus 7 we did a parathyroid scan which localized to right uh, sided parathyroid adenoma 
after surgery patient improved you can see that no there is a beautiful callus formation even this uh, tumor of the sternum has decreased so importance of calcium measuring calcium in all subjects this is another patient uh, this patient is a lady who had a scan for a back pain diagnosed as osteoporosis phosphate was not measured she was given bisphosphonate but it was not osteoporosis as uh, the previous speaker spoke it was osteomalacia secondary to <coughs> tumor which is causing phosphate loss in the urine it is a phosphate uh, tumor you can see that there is a tumor in the mandible on the dota scan which was causing uh, phosphaturic factor to secrete that is fgf23 because of that the bones were low once you remove this tumor patient will be okay similarly this is another man uh, uh, who was as multiple vertebral fractures but phosphate was not measured so he was initiated on anabolic agent teriparatide and you can see there is a tumor there is a fgf23 that is a phosphate uric tum uh, uh, factor which is secreted by tumor is very high and uh, that tumor is sitting on the lower limb is causing that problem after excising the tumor this patient is okay rather than treating osteoporosis so importance of checking fasting serum phosphate now when you uh, this is one 23 year old lady postpartum one month and she has got backache and no inflammatory signs on calcium and uh, she is short statured she had a lscs and the baby is okay kyphotic but no previous fractures no hearing loss the registrar has picked up a blue sclera that was an advantage for us we, and uh, baseline biochemical parameters were normal except for the high bone turnover bone resorption beta cross lab was high and be, 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 uh, anabolic uh, bone formation marker was also high now the this patient if you see young lady multiple vertebral fractures were there and when we did a osteogenesis imperfecta screening it was positive heterozygous but she never had a fracture what we did we started treating calcium or vitamin d anabolic agent after two years of anabolic agent we gave bisphosphonate and you can see how the bmd has improved point point four nine two two uh, 0.860 this patient is doing well patient is seven year follow-up and she is doing good so it was rarely you know this kind of secondary osteoporosis diagnosis uh, not diagnosed early and so very rarely pregnancy and lactation can cause osteoporosis but during pregnancy and lactation they women have bone loss it is picked up later but always we have to think of uh, other causes and one of the important factor is proton pump inhibitors like pantoprazole, esmeprazole, they can promote bone loss. Now, this is 67 year old lady, postmenopausal, low back ache, and uh, she was diagnosed as osteoporosis with fragility fracture, started on anabolic agent teriparatide. You can see her bones are very thin, multiple fractures, very severe osteoporosis t-score of minus 5.2 now the when we look at the severe osteoporosis we have to always think of secondary causes this patient was myeloma we patient was getting anabolic agent teriparatide so the treating you no know, the treatment is totally you no know, should be directed towards managing the primary source now this were uh, two children came to us with back pain had multiple fractures the mother felt that they are not losing uh, they are not gaining weight went to medical store loading them with the dexamethasone and they all had a low bone mass and fractures so gao is a important thing you will hear late today now this is a 59 year old lady uh, who was referred for the right hip fracture post hip fracture management and type 2 diabetes diabetes for 11 years very poorly controlled diabetes and x mild vitamin d deficiency is there when you look at this what uh, like you know this patient had already undergone dexa scan which was not in a osteoporotic anything no, not less than minus 2.5 but when we did a tbs you see that tbs was 1.158 
So this is where diabetes, bone quantity may be good, but bone quality will be lost. So th that's the importance of doing TBS in conditions like diabetes. Next is the bone turnover marker. In clinical practice, we do bone resorption marker CTX, otherwise known as beta cross lab, or anabolic marker P1NP. They are not very costly. In kidney disease, we do BSAP, bone specific alkaline phosphatase. Why it is important? Not for diagnosis, uh, for monitoring. This lady, 64-year-old uh, lady, who has got uh, osteoporosis, you can see the beta cross lab at baseline is 902 bone resorption. And this patient has got a, a osteoporosis and we can see that patient was given bisphosphonate, oral bisphosphonate and we can easily follow. We cannot do a DEXA, machine, a DEXA scan every three months. What happened? At the three months, you can see from 902 on alendronate, it has dropped to 321. It means patient is taking medicine good and compliance is good. So this is the advantage of doing a bone turnover marker, especially at baseline for follow-up. I like to summarize, osteoporosis is common and especially we are finding more salt intake, more sleep deprivation in women. We looked at the recently in 5,000 women, which part of the sleep is important for postmenopausal women, whether it is uh, going to bed early or going to bed late. We found that the people, women who are going late to bed have more in, uh, prevalence of osteoporosis compared to people who sleep early. And OSTA and FRAX are simple tools and biochemical, DEXA and radiological investigation, secondary osteoporosis have to be ruled out in appropriate clinical setting. Thank you so much. Thank you.